<laughs> What's up, everybody? Today, I'm gonna be cooking one of my pastelayas. I have a special request from a good friend of mine, Tony, out there in Texas, wanted me to do a video and show him how I cook my pastelaya step by step. I make two different types of pastelayas. I make one I call the Cajun pastelaya, which is old school, has less ingredients. And then I make another one that's called a Creole pastelaya. And that one has a little bit more ingredients to it. It's kind of more of a modern type thing, soul food type. Uh, so for today's video, today we are making that Creole. Uh, and today we're gonna be cooking it in a 10 gallon cast iron pot. So as I'm gonna get everything prepped, that'll take a few minutes and we'll be right back to show you how to make it step by step. See you soon. All right, y'all, we are back. And we now have all the ingredients prepped and ready to go for our Creole pasta lime. Today, we will start with two pounds of bacon. Uh, this is um, just basically a hardwood thick cut bacon. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm rendering the fat out of it. We are gonna be taking it out later and putting it on a fresh plate and snacking on it for the rest of the day. Uh, followed behind that, we'll put the pork, the chicken, which this right here is uh, four pounds of pork. This is uh, four pounds of chicken thighs cut up. This is three pounds of smoked sausage. Uh, this is a green onion smoked sausage that I'm using today. You can use whatever type of sausage that you want. A nice good smoked sausage is what you want to use. Of course, fresh green onions will go in later. Uh, chicken broth. So for four pounds of noodles, you need four cups per every pound of, of liquid. So we're gonna be splitting that up between chicken broth and eight cups of water. So this right here makes eight cups of chicken broth. This makes eight cups of um, water. And that goes for four pounds of noodles, 16 cups. Also, we'll be having in there some mushroom pieces, cream of mushroom, cream of chicken, and that entire bottle of Louisiana hot sauce. It does not get hot, all right? It, it is, that is great flavor. And then also we'll be putting in um, four pounds of onion. Uh, that's onion, celery, bell pepper, um, and partially mix. You can chop your own. Uh, usually a lot of times I only use onion uh, and green onion, but I went ahead and bought this mix for today. And then I'll need a little bit of cooking water as what we like to, as we're cooking, some of this will dry out. We'll need to add water to it and moisten it up. So we'll add it as needed, may not always need it for that. And then this pan here is what, once all this meat is cooked, we'll go in this pan combined and then later we'll be combined. One thing you're gonna notice through this video is I cook all the meat separately first. All right, then I put them on this pan mix, then I add them in and we'll go over that more in detail. So let's get started in this nice 10 gallon pot. Look at that, it's already steaming really well. It's very seasoned. Listen, listen to that sizzle. That right there is the sound of a good time. All right, so I'm gonna cook this down right when I'm ready to take it out. We'll come back, we'll pull it out, we'll show you the next step. Thanks. Woo wee, wanted to kind of show you here. Uh, this bacon's cooking down very good. You can still see it's kind of soft. It is fully cooked at this point, but what we want to do is we want to get this to a crisp. I want to get as much of that white fat out of there as I can. And you see it's leaving us nice. That is going to bring us a lot of good flavor to this. A few other things I wanted to kind of mention, a few little tips. If you notice, I do not season anything prior to cooking it. Because if you do that, that is going to stick to the bottom of the pan over here uh, or the pot as you're cooking it. Uh, so we want the, the seasoning to stay with the, with the dish. So we'll be seasoning after we add in the liquids. And today's seasoning, I'm gonna be using one, my personal favorite, it's my own T2's Cajun Swamper. Use any of your favorite own Creole uh, or Cajun seasoning that you prefer, that's up to you. I'll also be putting in some good shit. And uh, of course, I forgot to mention uh, the minced garlic. I will be adding that. Garlic does wonders to every dish. Um, but you use whatever flavor you wanna put in there when it comes to seasoning. Also, this is a big one that I'm making. I say a big one. Uh, this is probably one of the smaller pastelayas that I make. Um, the Cajun Ninja makes a, a even smaller one that he does on his stove top, and I've tried it, and it's really good. He uses bow ties. So if you're looking for a recipe for just a family meal, 
um, he, he has a really good video or you can take this in, these ingredients dumb it down quite a bit obviously by half if not even more uh, and, and then you can make this 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 one this possibly could really truly feed probably 15 to 20 um, grown adults and this is only half of what I can actually make in this pot and then I also can make a, I have a 30 gallon pot that I can make a lot where it's like 25 pounds of noodles uh, and can feed you know 150, 200 people very easily. So, but anyhow, just a few little tips as we're going through here as we're cooking on this bacon. Um, and a couple things that I didn't mention earlier. So, but I mean, look at this. This is just cooking so well. All right, we'll let this cook down a little bit more. And right when we're ready to pull it out, we'll come back and we'll throw the next ingredient in. All right. All right, y'all, we got the bacon out of there. Now, if you look down here, you'll see that beautiful bacon grease down at the bottom it's a nice thin layer coating the bottom of the pan so now what we're going to do we're going to take our pork notice like i said i'm cooking one thing at a time if you cook the meats all together one will cook faster than the other you, you'll have the potential to dry it out but you can do that i prefer not to oh to that there. Cool. all right let's give this a good stir Oh yeah, you want to get it, because as soon as you throw it in the pan like that, it is going to stick. So we want to get that off of there. There we go. There she goes. She don't stick for very long. I mean, this well-seasoned pan, it's just you, you put the coal to the hot real quick, it'll grab it. All right, so look at that. We are now going to brown this. We want to make sure that it is fully cooked. Um, and then we will pull this out once it's done, and then we'll be adding our chicken next. The pork will grab a lot of flavor from the bacon. That's why I cook it first in the bacon grease where the chicken thighs don't grab as much flavor as this pork will. And then some of these chunks look a little large. They are, they will shrink a bit. That is why I did cut them a little bit, a little over an inch for the most part. But the average size piece in here is about an inch wide, inch thick. So, and then when it comes to the pork, a lot of people ask what type of pork you use. You can use the temple meat, you can use pork loin, you can use uh, pork butt, the, um, the pork steaks, uh, something more of a darker meat. Pork chops kind of tend to dry out. I wouldn't use those so much, but this right here is four um, pork tenderloins. So th this is these are really good. They're tender, they're moist, they grab a lot of flavor. This is just my preference. And then with the chicken, my preference is thigh meat. I am not a fan of chicken breasts so anyway we'll be back soon i'm gonna get me a little snack oh look at this mm. we'll be seeing you all right y'all we're back i got that pork out of there look at that nice brown gravy down there at the bottom it came from this lovely pork look at this pork nice and brown cooked full through and through made a nice gravy so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this chicken inside there and we are going to do the same thing that we did with the pork with the chicken oh look at that there we'll put that right here Pop. done all right let's get this moved around in there all right so this chicken here we're just going to brown it down into the nice little pork and bacon gravy that's down there at the bottom and as you can see the chicken it's mixed it very well, taking the gravy right off the bottom. There is going to be some more finished chicken, so it'll generate a little bit more at the bottom, which is good. We want to minimize that, but we don't want to take all the moisture out. So I do cook it with the lid off the whole time. However, we got to pay attention, make sure that we maintain some moisture at the bottom of this pot at all times. If not, that's what that extra little water is that I have on the table. It's for the what if. All right. All right, so we don't have much ingredients left to go in there. We got the sausage going in next, and then the onions will be right behind it. We'll see you. All right, we are about. I just pulled the chicken out of there. And now we're going to add this smoked green onion sausage. Again, this is three pounds. We're going to put it in here and roll that sausage around. And all that nice juices that's been made from the bacon, the pork, and the chicken. All right, so we're getting close. Here's the chicken and the pork, got it all in the pan, kind of mixing. And look at that, look at that juice that's in there. We're gonna get all that back in that pot here shortly. So with the, the sausage, sausage that's already fully cooked, 
what we're going to do is we're going to brown it pretty good. And then uh, we'll, we will pull it, we'll add it to the meat pan. And then the next thing we'll do is be adding in the onions. And with the onions, see the stuff that's stuck to the bottom of the pan right there? The acid from the onions will take it right off. Um, it, is, it is great. And actually, you can push it right off with the paddle. We don't want to do that. We want to leave that. That's flavor that's going to come out later with the onions. So we'll be back shortly. We're going to brown these up, get these out of here. Then we'll start, we'll start adding in our vegetables. We'll be seeing you. All right, we are back. All right, we just pulled the sausage, got it nice and brown. You'll still see there's some really nice juice down there at the bottom. That's more of your fats and stuff, which is what we want. Ooh, it's popping good. So again, here's our blend. It's onion, bell pepper, and um, little. you see a little bit of celery in there, which is great. They even got a little bit of celery leaf in there. So we're gonna put both of these. This is four pounds. If you throw that away, your momo will li likely to come over to your house and slap you. You, you might want to keep these, man. These, these are these are good uh, storage containers for like gumbo, leftover gumbo and stuff. So anyhow, so now what we're going to do is we're going to cook these onions down. We're going to get them transparent. We want to stir them around. We want to pick up all that flavor that's in there, all the juices that was there. The onions will add a little moisture. However, same time, the onions can and will dry out on you. So pay attention to them, stir them really good, and then use the acids from the onion to get all that flavor that's stuck on the bottom down there. You want that. So use these onions as they're cooking down to get that off the bottom of that pot. Oh yeah. That's why we cook these last. We're getting all those flavors out of there. Okay. Once we get these onions where we want them, we'll come back and uh, I'll show you what they look like. And then we're gonna take that big old pan of meat right there, and we're gonna add it right here into, into this, and we're gonna cook these together, okay? And we are gonna cook them down, we're gonna mix them together real well. It'll cook the meat a little bit longer, but it'll allow all the combined flavors to come together. All right, so. All right, well, let me cook these down. We'll be back when these are done, and we'll add in our meat to this these lovely vegetables here. All right, we'll see you shortly. All right, y'all, we are back. As you can see, these onions are starting to get transparent very well. Um, they're browning good. And we've got most of the stuff off the bottom. Now, you, you see the liquid? I did have to add some liquid to it. It was that cup and a half I had sitting over there. Uh, we'll cook that down, however, uh, the onions didn't didn't get the uh, the moisture out of them like I would like, and that's that's a lot in part of getting um, already pre mixed stuff from the store. A lot of that stuff, um, it, you know, it's it's cut up, made some in one place, and then a lot of times it's frozen uh, or stored for a while before getting to a store. Then it's out on the shelf and it comes to you. It loses its moisture content. If I would have cut up four pounds of onions fresh, uh, which I would have used yellow sweet onions those have a lot of a lot more moisture because of how fresh they are and I, I usually wouldn't have had to do this but i decided to take a shortcut today and i bought pre-mixed stuff um but anyway that's what we have water for our high quality h2o right bobby boucher all right so now what we're going to do here is because since i only have two hands and um no cameraman um i went ahead and i, I used a lid here and i put six tablespoons of minced garlic on the lid here and we're going to add this in here so you want to wait until you kind of get your onions cooked down before you add this and uh you can do the jar stuff i really do like to jar stuff uh or you can do fresh garlic your choice uh i do like to use the what's in the jar we're gonna get that all in there oh yeah that looks good all right man let's get this uh let's get this mixed in there really well all right so i'm gonna let this cook for a few minutes let that garlic kind of get in there. As you can see, I'm cooking down some of that moisture that was put in. Um, we really don't want to have a lot of liquid in here when we add our noodles. We want, that's one thing is very important. Four cups to every one pound of noodles. If you do more than that, you will end up with some, some really soggy noodles. And if you don't have enough, your noodles won't cook or, or won't have enough to fully 
uh, soften them and they'll be a little crunchy there in the middle. So um, that is very important with this. Same thing like when we cook the jambalaya, we got to get the, uh, the the water to rice ratio right. If not, you end up with hard rice or um, soggy, mushy stuff. So with some of you, that might be your thing. That's, that's cool, but keep PG. All right, we'll be back here shortly. I'm going to let this cook down a few more minutes, and then we're going to add in all this good stuff right here, including the cream of mushrooms and the mushroom stems. All right, we'll be seeing you. All right, we're back. Uh, the onions are cooked where they need to be. The liquid's down to a minimum, which is what we want. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add these mushrooms. I'm going to leave the juice in it because it adds flavor. But those of you who don't like mushrooms, the way that I cook this, I don't wait to the end to put them in. I put them in now. It allows them to cook down, and you won't even know that they're in there. Hi -ya, get that in there. That's right. You won't even know these are even in there. They're going to kind of disappear. Same thing with the cream of mushroom soup. But if you're absolutely against the, the cream of mushroom or the mushrooms, just leave them out. Just leave them out. Add you another can of cream of chicken and or add you a can of cream of chicken and a cream of celery. Your choice. Okay. All right. So now we got those in there. I'm going to let those just cook down for a second. I'm going to get these two cans open and we'll be right back. All right. We are back. Let's go ahead and add these, this can of cream of mushroom. Taking it on out of there. Get in there. There you go. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> right there. And now the cream of chicken. And I don't use any certain name brand when it comes to this. However, I do like to, uh, especially being down here back home, uh, New News Grocery Store right there in Scott, Louisiana. That's where I went and got all this great meat, which we are getting ready to add right now. I'm going to see if I can do this without dropping the meat or the camera. Sorry about that. That was a finger. I want you all to see these juices. Look at them juices. See them? See them juices running out? We want that back in there. And try to get all the meat in the pan. Not on the floor. That's all right. 10 second rule, right? <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, let that drip in there. We want to get, see that? Oh, look at that. That is just pureness. We want to get all that out of there. All right. Okay. Now we want to give all this a good stir. Get it mixed. Mix that real good in there. Sorry about the camera stuff. Trying to, trying to move six pounds of meat here. I want to give it a good stir. Now you're mixing the onions, all the vegetables, the meat, the sausage. Everything's mixing together very well. Just look at that. The cream of mushroom really thickens it up. Really does help it out a lot. All right. Now what I do want to do is a cup and a half of water. I want to add that to it. It gives it a little bit more moisture to allow this to cook together. And I want to cook this for a good 10, 15 minutes if I can. Um, I want to get it good and blended and mixed together. All right, and then also what we're gonna do at this point, is we're gonna come over here to this yummy stuff right here. We're gonna start off with a little bit of the, the good shit. Some really good season. You can use special shit, chicken shit, dumb shit. You can use whatever shit you wanna use. Um, and I'm gonna I'm coat that pretty good. And uh, the name stands for itself, it's really good. And now I'm gonna use my own personal blend, T2's Cajun Swamper. It's, uh, I love this stuff. Uh, I enjoy making it. If you want some, hit me up. I can get you some. And I'm going to put even more of that in here. Oh, yeah, look at that. You see how I'm just coating the top of it? I want to give this some really good flavor. There we go. That's plenty. And then now, it's the Holy Grail. The one and the only hot sauce to use. Louisiana look for the red dot and we want to put that in there like so look at his mixing putting that in there and again this this one here is not heavy with a vinegar flavor 
this sauce here is it's more it's thicker as you can see it's really good and because of the size of this i'm only going to put half if i would have cooked a full 10 gallon pot i would have put the whole thing in there and anybody that's eaten my pastalaya you've eaten the hot sauce you didn't even notice it ha 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 great flavor though oh i can smell it man it's so good so it's not about spice in this to me i'm not a real person that likes it super hot i like flavor and that's why i add and put in what i do again when it comes to the seasoning you can use what you want it is your choice all right i chose my own seasoning blend good shit and louisiana hot sauce if you like dill pickles and go ahead use tabasco use crystals use whichever one you like that's not my choice okay now see how nice and thick that is that's perfect it's what we want so we're going to let that cook down like i said a good 10 to 15 minutes probably another 10 minutes at this point but this right here this is where all the magic happens it's happening right now in front of us this is where all the flavor comes together all right we'll be back shortly when i'm ready i'm gonna uh, we'll let this cook down, then I'm going to add the liquids. When I add the liquids, we'll be back. And again, the liquids that's going to be going in here, besides what you see, which a lot of that will cook down, will be eight cups of chicken broth, which is two 32-ounce um, containers, and also eight cups of water, which is measured in here in this old-school pitcher. How you like that? I bet everybody's grandmother had one of them. Remember Mama had one of those? Oh, yeah, that's it. And when we get back, that'll be in there, and then we're adding these guys. Once we put those noodles up in here, it is gonna be flavor town. Here we go, we'll be back, we'll be seeing ya. All right, y'all, we are back. I got all that blended up and cooked. We cooked it down for about 15 minutes. The one thing you gotta do is you're definitely, once you get it and you're cooking that down after you put in the cream of mushroom and chicken soups, it's very thick and it will stick to the bottom of any, any pot you cook in. Um, so I got out my big metal uh, paddle, and that way I can scrape the bottom really good to keep the stuff off the bottom and also keep the flavor there. So as you can see, I'm moving it. I've added in all my liquids. All right, so we got 16 cups there. That's, that looks like a lot of liquid. It does, and that's what you want. All right, so we'll go ahead and get that to stay here. Now we're gonna come add these four pounds of noodles. I'm gonna leave the noodles whole, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with them. We're going to put them in there. Let's just get them all in. And we'll get them situated with the paddle here in a second. Sorry about the camera work here. Sorry. Uh, bu budget, budget cuts. Uh, had to let go of the cameraman. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do this the best I can without dropping the phone. I want you to see what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna basically, you can break the noodles. You wanna push them down below the liquid, all right? It don't matter if you break them or not. That's why I left them whole, because they are gonna break a little bit. Sorry about that, here we go. But right now, the goal is to get this, get these noodles below that liquid line and get it mixed up with your meat. And you're gonna wanna do this, because you're gonna wanna press them in really good and stir them so they don't cook as a clump. They will clump up on you. Let me get these stirred up, and once I get them stirred up, I uh, will come back and I'll show you what it needs to look like. Okay, y'all, we're back. Now, as you can see, I've got the noodles basically below the water line. You wanna just kind of push them down there. Um, no different than when you're, you're cooking noodles on a stove. You want to, you wanna get the noodles in there as much as you can. I mean, you'll have a few stick up here or there. And what we're gonna do is, you can see, I'm letting this get to a boil. I'm gonna, I'm gonna boil these noodles until they're pretty much done. I'm gonna stir this a couple times. Um, I'm gonna get them, I'm gonna sample the noodles. I, I want them still to be a touch crunchy on the inside. And then once I get to that point, I will kill the fire and, and we'll go through that process once we get there. And then I'm gonna cover it and I'm gonna let this bad boy sit for about 45 minutes to an hour. That's gonna allow the noodles to grab the rest of the juices that are in there. Um, and it's gonna be, it's just gonna be great. It's gonna be a, um, a mouthful of flavor. So, all right, well, we'll be back. We're gonna let this kind of do its thing and I'm gonna stir it a couple times. Um, but once I once I go to stir it, I'll, I'll come back on the video and we'll, we'll take a look at it. We'll be seeing you. All right, we're gonna grab our 
Oh, not that one. Let's grab our metal one here, our aluminum. All right, so look, here we go. It's gonna be our first stir. Now mind, mind you, these noodles only been here maybe just over five minutes. You see how they're already flexing? I'm gonna wanna scrape that bottom again, just to make sure we're not getting anything down there. All right, this is critical that you stir these noodles, get these noodles mixed up, because they'll start to clump together, or cook together, and then you'll have big old clumps of noodles. And when that happens, they typically don't cook all the way. I've got a clump right there I'm trying to break up. And all you gotta do is just kind of dig your paddle into them, spread them out. So as you can see, they're flexing already, that's good. They're not quite where they wanna be, where we want them at yet, but once we're done stirring, you wanna kind of push them back down into that liquid. You wanna keep that water on them as much as you can, you know, so that they actually cook, all right? And you're gonna repeat this process as many times as you need. I wanted to show you after what five minutes looks like. Uh, these noodles typically take about 15 to 20 minutes. So about every five minutes, you wanna give them a good stir and then you're also looking to make sure that there's no noodles that are clumped together. Uh, but anyway, this is the first one. I'll probably stir it two or three more times. When we get to the last stir, when I'm ready to shut the fire off, we'll come back and I'll show you that process. Again, you're gonna repeat this process um, every five minutes for the next 20 minutes. So five minutes is down. So probably once I finish this, this segment here, probably another three minutes, I'll be doing it again. I'm gonna do this four times. On the fourth time, I'll come back and we should be ready to kill our fire. We'll be seeing you. Okay, y'all take a look at that. That is a pasta laya right there in its final stages. Okay, so now what we're gonna do even though we see this liquid, you see the liquid in there, that is okay. These noodles are about three quarters of the way cooked and that's where you want them. So now we're gonna come over here. We're gonna shut our fire completely off the wrong way. All right. And then I'm gonna take my nice paddle here and we're gonna scrape that bottom. Get any, anything that's stuck to the bottom off flavor there. So. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pat this back down into the liquid, just like we've been doing. There's not a whole lot of liquid left, just enough. And like I said, now the fire is off. And by the way, I was cooking on a medium to low fire. I kind of cooked everything kind of slow. Um, just so, it, you know, things really, really wouldn't burn. All right, now what we want to do, we want to grab this lid and we want to get this lid on here. And we want to let this sit here and, and soak in its own juices for the next 30 to 45 minutes. Normally I usually do 45 minutes, so, yep, we're gonna do that. And then we'll, we'll be right back and I will show you what the final product looks like. So I hope you enjoyed it today. We'll be back, we'll be seeing you soon. All right, there was one thing I did forget to do. This is the process of where I do it. But once we're ready to let it soak, these green onions, I almost forgot about those. I do put them in last because they don't need much to cook. So let's grab our paddle. To give that another good little stir one more time. And, uh, but I do wait to the end to put them in because they're, they're very thin onion. They don't take long to cook. They have really good flavor. You can also wait until it's all soaked and, and put them in fresh at that point. But I do like to put them in at, at this point now and kind of let them cook within this, the steam and the liquids, the little liquid that's left in there. All right, got that good mix. Let's get this all pushed back down. Like I said, every time you stir it, if you, if you do stir it, which once you put the lid on here, don't take the lid back off for 45 minutes. Let that, let that steam and everything in there do its thing and finish cooking those noodles. And then these noodles will absorb the rest of that liquid. Okay, we'll be seeing you. Okay, y'all, here it is. It's been 45 minutes, it's been soaking in its own juices, uh, steam, um, but I promise you, it's still very hot. It's been sitting in here, no heat for about 45 minutes. So let's take a look at this bad boy. Oh, looky there. You notice most of the liquid is all gone. 
That's because the noodles have soaked it up. Let's put this lid right here. All right, you can see you'll see it steaming out. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna give her a good stir. Kind of just flip her there, look at that. Look at the moist, look how moist that is. That, my friends, is what I call my Creole pastalaya. That right there is so good. All right, I'm gonna finish mixing this up. All you wanna do is just mix it up real good. Just trying to turn it. And then uh, I'm gonna fix me a plate of this, bring it in the kitchen, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna look at all the consistencies and how all these flavors came together. We'll see you soon. All right, we're back. And this time we have the final product. This right here is the, uh, this is what I call my, my Creole pasta lye. It's really good. Uh, we got a little bit of the pork. Here's that green onion that I put in there very last. Nice and soft. Mmm. Let's give this a try. These noodles here, they're, because you remember when we turned the fire off, they were only about three quarters of the way cooked. They were still a little hard in the middle. And uh, by turning it off and having that little bit of liquid in there, allowed these noodles to absorb the rest of that liquid and finish cooking. Uh, and, and that's why I say it's very important to make sure that you get the right amount of liquid in there. So it's four cups of liquid to every one pound of noodles. Too much will make them soggy, not enough they won't fully cook. So let's see, uh, let's, uh, let's do the test. Mmm. Man, this is full of flavor. That is good. Yes, mm -hmm. let's get that with a piece of sausage and chicken. Mm -mm -mm. Wow, that is some amazing flavor there. Mm. It's really good. Mm. Not real spicy, full of flavor. You know that everything was cooked from basically scratch, and that's that's what brings all the flavor. Cooking everything down, that bacon grease at the beginning really does a lot, especially helps out the pork. So, um, again, just a few other things. Um, you know, you can change up and, and and put the flavor that you want in there. If you're going to do anything with shrimp, you're going to wait until the end when you put all the liquid in to put your shrimp. If not, you'll overcook your shrimp. Um, and I will be cooking a Creole pastalaya and a, a, um, a Cajun pastalaya at the same time, Memorial Weekend, up in Ohio. Um, so for two young men that are graduating up there. Uh, and at that time, um, I'll be videoing both of those. So we'll definitely put those videos out there. Uh, you'll see me doing um, both of them at the same time, actually. So. Uh, and there's other recipes out there. You know, like I said uh, earlier in the video, the Cajun Ninja has a smaller one where he uses bow tie um, noodles versus spaghetti noodles. And uh, there's a few more that's out there. Um, and they all they all have their own little twist to them. So this is my version. This was request by Tony. So Tony, here you go. Um, hopefully you and your gang out there with, uh, I think it's Calibrated Cookers. Uh, Y'all can put your own little twist and customize it to your liking. So here it is. I appreciate y'all tuning in, and uh, if there's any more videos or anything else you want to see me cook, hit me up, let me know, and uh, I'll make it happen for you. Appreciate it. I'm going to enjoy this. You enjoy the rest of your day. Have a good one.